Hi guys and welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm going to talk about baby items that we've bought and things we find useful for a newborn and what we intend to buy from now on. Uh, we still have things to buy as our baby is two in three months so stay with us and you'll learn so many more things about what we used with our first two children and what new things we intend to use with our third. So we're going to start talking about cloth nappies and regular single-use nappies, the ones you buy in the supermarket. I'm also going to test the, the absorption of the cloth nappies that I've got and the nappy that I'm currently using with my youngest, which is an Asda brand one, which we found to be okay. Also with Sophie, when she had um, rashes with any other nappies. And this is what we bought for the new baby for the first month until she can fit into a proper cloth nappy. First, I'm going to talk to you about these. These are called uh, tot bots. They're my favorite. They have bamboo in the inside and they are very absorbent. This is a teeny fit one, right? So this matches a baby that is under four kilos. But sometimes you, you might find them that as a fit, they might be big. So you might want to wait if you see that they're too big for your baby and just start off with a regular nappy. These are Kit and Kin, uh, single-use nappies that we bought. I've never bought before. I thought we should try with the new baby. Uh, they're hypoallergenic ones, and I'm hoping they're gonna be nice for our baby until she can fit into the cloth nappies. Now, I would use these during the day, right? They're all in one. They've got the, this is called an insert, right? So it's already sewn into the, um, the wrap, right? The protection that would protect your, um, your nappy from leaking on the outside. So this is something that's going to protect uh, the pee coming out of the insert, right? But for night times, they have these night ones, which are very, very nice. So you've got an insert. You can buy extra inserts if you'd like. So if you want, if you have a heavy wetter, a baby that does a lot of pee, then you might need an insert, which you can buy extra, right? These go from four kilos up, right? Um, this is Bamboozle Stretch Tot Bots as well. I'm, I'm a very big fan of Tot Bots. If you're looking for um, nappies, they're different from child to child. A child might be, um, I don't know, longer and thinner. A child might be chubbier. So different children can wear different types of nappies, right? But this is what I felt was best from the point of view of absorption. They're very fluffy and comfortable. They're very, very soft. And we loved them so much with Sophie. And we use some on Mati as well. It's just our uh, washing machine broke at a certain time and it would get clothes dirty. So I didn't feel that it was sanitary anymore to try to use these nappies, which meant I just gave up on cloth nappies for a while. And he went to single-use nappies. Again, we tried lots of nappies. We tried Tesco's, which were very good for us. Uh, Tesco's, the Rascals and Friends, those are the best from my perspective. The only issue that I had is once he got to wear nappy pants, right? Because he's being uh, potty trained. Those uh, nappy pants are very difficult to find in stock for bigger sizes so we just had to find something else that was good for us as does was good as well and with sophie we used the regular nappies the all the one use nappies um from the supermarket 
for the first month, but she would get rashes. We tried lots of brands. We tried Pampers. We tried Huggies. We, we tried so many and she would still get rashes. She was a bit sensitive. So we had to buy cloth nappies. She had such nice ones. Uh, some were handmade for her. Um, some were bought. She had girly uh, patterns, which obviously wouldn't work on Mati. So uh, one of the reasons I had to give them away once we had Mati was because, of course, the 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 puffy patterns, the the girly patterns wouldn't have gone well with a boy. <laughs> Again, the ones that we did keep, we did use, but this material, as you can see. Um, this is very, very important to be kept intact so the water, the, the wee or whatever doesn't come out. When you use them for like three, four years like we did, they get, get a little bit used up. So not always um, is okay to use them again because you'll get wet clothes all the time. This is called a peanut wrap. So this is what keeps everything in. So these are the night nappies. You would put this because it's thicker inside of this, right? You stuck this one first and then the other one over it. And that would be your nappy overnight. They keep a lot of wee inside. I think they're awesome, to be honest with you. They're very absorbent. And if you feel like it's still not enough, you can buy and buy and add and so on. You can add as many as you feel. It will get a bit bulky, but during the night, I'm guessing it's very important for the baby to not feel wet, so he or she doesn't wake up. So that would help during the night, of course. With the single-use ones, we've tried so many. These are the ones that we found okay from the point of view that they don't leak. And they last quite well overnight. My children, they drink water before they go to sleep. So they will obviously pee a lot during the night. Yeah. Um, in regards to poo, you can wash by hand and then put them in the washing machine. But there are such things called liners, which you can add over them which are sort of a bamboo material thing that goes into, you can throw it into the toilet with the poo and then the nappy will be just fine as if it was never wet, it was never pooed or anything. Or you might want to wash the nappy as well if they pee as well, right? But they these are very, very healthy, right? It's healthier than using uh, products with chemicals in them, like uh, the single-use ones. The reason they absorb so much is because they have chemicals inside, which will keep the pee inside. Um, those chemicals, depending on your child's sensibility, can uh, make allergies, can give rashes, can give lots of things uh, for other children. It might be okay, but for some sensitive children, it won't be, right? And these are lovely. Uh, these are for, for newborns, as I said. And if your newborn is under four kilos, but over, let's say, two and a half, right? They're going to be quite big, big enough to fit in these. Sometimes children can be under uh, two kilos and a half and they would you know they they wouldn't find them good fit so you would be recommended to wear uh single use ones or muslin muslin in a wrap right so these wraps you can find them in smaller sizes as well this is a size 2 right in smaller sizes and then you just put muslin squares inside and that will absorb everything right and that's good for premature babies and little babies and so on. That's something that I discovered a bit later. Now, if you want to do everything naturally so you don't get any allergies and do the best for your child, of course, every parent knows what's best for his child. Each child is different. So we can't say what I did will be good for you or what you did will be good for me. 
from my point of view is if you want everything to be chemical free then you'd rather wash the baby rather than um using wipes I think you'd rather, you know, use wipes only when you're away from home and you can't wash the baby and try to find wipes that have as much water as possible and less chemicals or not, no chemicals at all. The ones that don't have any smell, they don't have any alcohol, those are the best for the babies, especially when they're newborn. They're very sensitive to all these things. I'm looking at Sophie right now. She's four and a half. And when I use certain wipes, she'll get all red in the area where I wiped her, right? So I might use wipes to wipe her hands when she's been coloring and she got really dirty. And she will literally get red on, their, on her hands because of the wipes. Right, But if I wash her hands or if I just uh, use water, she won't get red. So um, it's your decision what's best for you. Now, if you want to do cloth nappies, they can get washed into the washing machine with regular detergent. I also used uh, special detergents, the ones that the brands that make nappies make for the nappies. They're recommended because nappies might be dirtier than regular clothes. So you want to take the smell out, you want to take the dirt out, and those are stronger, they would say, but gentle enough for baby's bumps. <laughs> but you can't use a conditioner, right? Um, you can't use anything to give the, the nappies smell because that would actually uh, interfere with their absorption. Once in a while, you can clean them with a little bit of vinegar, right? The, the vinegar helps take the smell out. If you feel like no matter how many times you wash them, they still smell. You can use uh, vinegar and a bicarbonate of soda. These are very, very good for taking the smell out, right? And these are very, very nice, like, you know, underwear for babies. They're very, very cute. Um, you can keep them in very good condition, but you, depending on how often you change them, you might wash them a lot. Um, when Sophie was little, we used to wash a whole washing machine of nappies every day. So you would use about 10 nappies a day and let's say one or two during the night. That would be, if you want to wash every two days, you'd need to start off with about 24 nappies. If uh, you want to um, just use the nappies during the night because they're better than the other nappies. I have to say I've had accidents with no matter what kind of nappies uh, with both Sophie and Mati at night because babies tend to move a lot during their sleep and no matter how good the uh, the nappy is sometimes they do leak so this can happen no matter what nappies you're using but i love the fact that these ones and i'll show you in my demonstration later uh, these ones actually uh, absorb the thing the water before it goes out of the nappy so they absorb a lot faster and um, I find that accidents are less to happen with the cloth ones. The materials used, they can be microfiber inside of the nappy. They can be just cotton. They can be um, uh, bamboo. These are the ones that I like best, the bamboo ones. I find that they absorb and they're fluffy and they're very nice. If you find that your child still gets a rash using these nappies, you might want to try a liner that is based on silk. The silk liners are especially for babies who get, get rashes even from their own poo because every time they poo, they get an awful rash. So then you would put a liner that's um, made of silk and... Um, I'll link down below a website where I order my nappies and you can check out and document yourself and inform yourself about this. And um, silk liners, I found they were great with Sophie because she would get a rash every time she would poo as well. So 
um, they would help us keep the rashes away. Also, if you want to use a um, cream, a nappy cream on your baby and you're using cloth nappy, it's recommended that you put a liner so the cream doesn't get into the nappy and affect the absorption of the nappy, right? So a liner would be recommended then as well. So I used to have lots of silk uh, liners, which I would use, and uh, I would use a nappy cream, which I will show you later on in this video. Um, and that would help me a lot, okay? From the point of view of clothes, before I go on to testing the nappies with you guys, I'm going to show you the clothes as well. But I wanted to say, it's very important, not only how your baby looks, but how the baby feels in their clothes. So you'd want to buy clothes that will not restrict their tummy or, you know, because the elastic bands on their tummy, they can be quite nasty like uh, it would bother them it would make them you know their food come back and things like that it would make them sick so you'd want to wear body suits or body vests and uh, if you buy trousers i'll show you as well the elastic has to be one of the soft ones the the large ones that don't actually press on the tummy compared to outfits I've seen that have a very tough elastic. The elastic band is very tough and it's, it's really, really not comfortable for the babies. Also, I find it that I know people are going to say lazy mom, but sleep suits, right? Body grows. They're the best. I mean, the best. I, I can't find anything better than that. My babies were sleep suits or baby grows, whatever you want to call them, as much as possible. They loved them so much and they would sleep in them, they would play in them. Even now, Sophie's got, Sophie's four years old and she got, she's got onesie pajamas and two-piece pajamas and she'll always pick up the onesie ones because she finds them more comfortable. Mati is two years old and he still wears onesie pajamas. And at daytime when he plays, most of the times I leave him with onesie sleep suits because he feels they're so comfortable. So he sleeps so well in them. He plays in them. When they're baby, let's say until they're one year old, you can definitely keep them in those in the house. I used to put, put sleep suits on them even when I had to go to the health visitor for a weighing because it's so easy to take them off and put them on again and the baby will not be uncomfortable with you trying to put so many clothes on them if it's cold outside you'll just put a um sorry a snowsuit over that if it's warm outside you'll just put a jacket on or something else and a hat and that's it right so if if your baby wears a sleep suit, he's gonna feel much more comfortable. So even though with Sophie, we tried so many clothes and we loved trying on dresses, we tried baby jeans, they're so cute, but think about how difficult it is for them to wear something tight around their bellies. I mean, it looks really nice, but it's not comfortable. So we wore some things, we loved them, we wore them once, we took a picture and then we realized they're not so comfortable, let's not wear them again. So if you want to buy things that she's, she or he will definitely wear more, I would suggest you buy many, many slip suits or, um, you know, baby grows. Um, I realized that I tend to buy lots of clothes with my children. So this time I thought about buying seven baby vests, seven um, body suits with long sleeve, seven uh, sleep suits and a couple of outfits. I bought a dress with long sleeve, a dress with short sleeve. I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna buy more but I'm trying to keep it to like, you know, a dress a month so I don't overdo it. With Sophie, I tended to buy lots and lots of dresses and some ended up being worn just once for the picture and that's it. So think about that as well when you're having a baby and when you're buying things for the baby. So let's go on to the test for the nappies now. Broken the nappy pant into... Uh, 
or nappy. <laughs> I've got the nappy here and I've got the nappy there. And I'm only going to use a cup like this. I think um, a baby shouldn't, I mean, wouldn't pee more than this in one time or in a night. So from my experience, I think that a full cup of these should be enough, right? I'm going to use just plain water. Okay. And we'll see. Okay. Good. So let's start with this one, okay? Just in case, we've got underneath it um, this protection that will not allow it to wet my bed. But um, you see it absorbed inside quite quickly. I'm not finished yet. So I peed, I peed, I put the water all over the nappy. So not only in the front, but also in the back. As you can see, this front is still dry. So the water didn't go through to the other side. This is wet. And this is dry. This is dry as well. So I would say the cloth nappy did such a good job with this one. And it's a tiny one, right? It's a teeny fit. So it would go for a baby that's up to four kilos. I think it would work even more than four kilos. But usually after four kilos, you would go to the one size ones. Going on to the next one. This is Kit and Ken. Right, you ready? Front and back, front and back. Okay, all of it. First of all, some of it dripped out. I have to say, I'm not very impressed. That means if the baby will pee backwards or forwards, the water or the pee will go out. Going on the other side, it's not dry. And not actually holding on too much pee, does it? So this is the kit and kin one. And then we're going through with the last one. The last one being the one that we're currently using with the boy we have. As I said, we're potty training, so he's not using as many nappies as he used to. Maybe, but when he does pee, he pees a large quantity. I have to say I'm very pleased with this one. You see how the water didn't go, it just absorbed instantly. So it didn't get the chance to go around. If you go on the other side, it's all dry. I'm a bit disappointed with the hypoallergenic ones because they didn't hold in the pee. They're definitely uh, wet in here. So that means they would have wet the, the clothes. Again, this one is dry dry as it can be nothing's wet in here this one is dry you wouldn't even tell it's wet to be honest um you'd have to check it and it's dry in here so my opinion is that if you want to go for the supermarket ones you should go for a brand that's good for you and your children um so no rashes whatever is comfortable for you think about the planet <laughs> Uh, but mainly go for something that has less chemicals in it. And if you want to go for cloth nappies, um, you have to try them. So every child is different. The sticker, it was not built with the wrap in, with the, with the wrap sewn to the material like the regular ones. This is a regular one, right? So this is how it looks. It's been sewn together, but this is not as thick as this to the touch. And we're going to try one of these too, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So I've got a full cup. Okay. There you go. Usually when you have a girl, a lot of the pee goes to the back. When you have a boy, a lot of the pee goes in the front. So... 
mainly what you're interested in is for it to hold very well in the front and in the back. So what I can tell you is it didn't get to the wrap. So it's wet inside, you can see, but the wrap is not wet. So it didn't go out, but it did go from the liner to the thicker part of the nappy. Okay. So I wanted you to see and think about whether you find it useful for you or not. If you're getting ready for a baby, what your decisions will be. If you're not decided yet what to do. If you have a baby and he has allergy like my babies. If they get rashes and you tried so many brands. I know a lot of people find Pampers very useful because they hold on to a lot of pee. For us, first of all, we got rashes on Pampers. We tried Pampers Premium, the ones that are supposed to be for babies with allergies. And they're very soft and so on. But those didn't hold the pee as well. So during the nights, you would find the bed that was wet. A bed wet is not a good thing because the baby can't sleep being wet. <laughs> so obviously, um, we tried other brands and we ended up just using cloth nappies for the sensitive child. The other child, he got rashes to some brands, but he was okay with other brands. So we ended up with the Asda ones or the Tesco ones. Rascal and Friends from Tesco, I found them really, really nice. But um, at a certain point, if they get too wet, the moment the baby gets up, the nappy will fall down. <laughs> so that's something that you wouldn't want to happen if your baby pooed, obviously. Um, we tried many, many things. And um, because, as I said, every child is different. For now, as blankies, a lot of people recommend you to buy whatever you like. Of course, whatever you feel comfortable with. I just wanted to show what I bought. I used it for Mati and I, I kept it in such a good condition. I'm going to use it with our next baby as well. This is a very nice design. A very fluffy, soft, comfortable material. It's a baby and me product. It it was very useful in the buggy, I have to say. So always have a blankie in your buggy to cover up your baby if it's a cold weather outside. We live in England, so obviously it's raining. It can get cold. It can get unexpectedly cold. So you have to get ready for any type of weather. So I love this one so, so much. But I also bought um, a summer one and I wanted to show you. It's the muslin blanket that we bought for the baby. For the summertime when it's very hot, you still want to use a blanket if it's windy. We also bought this from Baby and Me. Right? So it's very, very nice materials, very soft. I like the pattern. I like the color. Also, I wanted to show you, this was bought for the baby girl, for the car seat. It's so, yeah, so nice, and it's yellow. And it's got duckies on it. It's very, very cute. And this is the bathtub we bought for the baby. It's one of the most recommended ones. It's a snuggle one. Now, the body wash that I'm going to use is this one, the oil, okay, but I bought a shampoo from Stella because I found this to work better. A lot of newborns have, uh, you know, the issue that you need to aspirate them. So, um, I've gone through a, quite a lot of products for aspirating their nose. I'm always using saline, but when I'm aspirating my babies, even now that they're grown up, I always clean, this, disinfect this between each other. And I'm using this thing because it's very, very comfortable to use it. 
Babies don't like being aspirated, don't like their nose getting cleaned, but when they can't breathe, and with babies it can happen really often, especially because they when, when they breastfeed, they breathe through their nose. So if they have something in their nose, they cannot breathe when they're breastfeeding. The best way is to use some saline and to use some products that aspirate because you don't want the saline to stay there. Sometimes it goes out by itself and you just have to wipe it out. Sometimes it doesn't. I recommend this. I bought it off Amazon and it's been really, really useful. It's, we've been using it for four years now. So I'd say it's one of the best things I've bought. So in regards to wipes, we decided this time we're going to try these. From Kit and Ken. We got a subscription for them. They're supposed to be 99% water and not cause any allergies. Now, my advice from my experience is that when you're away from home, you're going to need these. But when you're at home, the best way to sort out any kind of situation, if it's a pee, is to use a muslin square with some water. And if it's a poo, just to wash the baby. The best way to avoid any rashes or any other medical problems is to wash with water and, you know, the products that you use for washing up the baby. Now, if you are away, try to find wipes that are as natural as possible if you don't want to get any allergies or rashes. Try the alcohol-free ones. Um, because I've noticed with alcohol, the, the wipes that have alcohol in them, uh, even if you try to wipe hands, they can get reactions. So I can't wait to test these and tell you about them. And today's vlog is also about what other products we find useful for kids and we bought for newborn kids. So this is what I'm going to talk to you about. So... I have this wonderful sleeping bag. I've had one with Sophie. I've had one with Mati. And this is this was Mati's and I'm keeping it for baby. I find that every child is different. <laughs> but with Mati, he felt he slept better when he was in a sleeping bag. With Sophie, she would she couldn't stand being in a sleeping bag. It's very, very comfortable. This is a thin one. I didn't want to use thick materials because they could get too heated and, you know, that's not good. Another thing I found useful was carrying my baby. This is my wrap. It's a silk and uh, cotton one from Lenny Lamb, as you can see. Lenny Lamb, and it's got, it's sewn, so it's been made um into this lovely pattern it's got two sides you can wear it on either side and i love it i used it with mati and i'm going to use it with baby as well i understand that a lot of people prefer to use buggies we use a buggy as well but sometimes babies cannot be soothed so easily in a buggy and babies that have problems with their tummies their tummy hurts or something's bothering them or they're teething. Sometimes they sleep better in the uh, wrap. So I used a wrap tie and a marsupi with Sophie. But the best I liked was this one, for which one I used for Mati and I'm, I kept it. I, had, I tried so many <laughs> baby wearing systems. And this one fit my needs best. <laughs> Every person is different. Again, you have to try to see which one is best. In England, we have many baby wearing groups where you can go and test a lot of baby wearing systems. So you can go and test them and see which one's best for you before you buy them. You can try my tie, wrap tie. Uh, wrap like this one um, and there are so many carriers that you can try as well but for newborns these wraps are the best so it's an investment but it can be used for up to three years to be honest with you my children after the age of one didn't want to be carried anyway anymore 
but I use them like with two children and they're very, very useful. If you plan on having more children, you can reuse them or you can sell them after you finished using them. Good. Moving on to clothes that I found useful when having a baby. Now, I know a lot of people go for the outfits and the dresses and all that. But from my point of view, the best clothes ever for a newborn, the best clothes to wear are the baby grows or sleep suits, whatever you want to call them. They're very comfortable. They don't have any elastic on the middle that will uh, bother your baby. And they're very use useful when you have to change the baby many times and you can find them in sets also when it comes to going outdoors i try to find uh, dungarees with a bodysuit this is the best way to go out with a baby from my perspective right after a certain age like after six or nine months i would find dungarees without the sockies without the socks <laughs> But the the idea of having socks on their legs is very good for some. For me, it's not because my children don't like socks. They've never they never liked them, and I'm assuming my third one won't like them either. I've got socks bought, but anyways, I don't think she will. <laughs> my experience says that they didn't like the socks. I've got summer dress right dresses for girls are very good again they don't tie around this is just for um <clears throat> this is just for design so it doesn't tie your your waist it doesn't bother the, the tummy area it's very important to keep the tummy area you know comfortable and this is a a cold weather dress yeah again so it doesn't bother here. It just it's just for design, right? And then if you buy an outfit, it's very important to watch the outfit and see that the trousers don't have a thick elastic, you know, there that would bother their tummy. The the ones with the longer elastic bands, which is very comfortable, they're very very good for the tummy. These are the best ones if you really want to go for an outfit. We also use these wipes, but they were okay with Mati. But I've noticed that Sophie gets red in the area where she wipes herself with these. For example, if she wipes her hands or her face, she's going to get little red spots where she wipes herself. So I'm guessing it's not very okay for children that have allergies, but it's been okay with Mati. So not always the, the brand that you use for nappies will be okay from the point of view of wipes. It's always best to go natural and just use water. And when it comes to nappy change creams, I found this to be the best one for us. I've been using this since Sophie was born. We also used it with Mati. Sorry for the aspect. So what's good about this cream? It's got a zinc oxide, which is very important for healing properties. It's got... Uh, chamomile which is very very important as well and it's natural so most of it is natural ingredients is very very good and to be honest the only one that actually helped us with without making us have allergies or anything and i don't know i i think there's nothing that i can tell you unless you try it by yourself and see how good this is I hope it's useful for you too. So for baby Cleo Zoe, we did buy um, by my side cot because I really wanted to try it. See if I can breastfeed and take care of the baby while the baby's by my side. If the baby will want to sleep in this cot. I wanted to show you this lovely sign that someone made for me. I'll link it in the description below. If anyone wants to get one, they're so lovely. I have one for Sophie and one for Mati. And I got one for baby Zoe. And um, I wanted to say about beds that 
my experience with my children is that neither one of them wanted to sleep in the cot. I mean, it's okay. You, they would fall asleep and then you would move them in the cot, but they would wake up right away. Mati had a reflux, so we had to buy him this pillow so he could sleep a bit sitting up. Now I'm keeping this in case we need it with baby Zoe as well. You never know. But I just wanted to say as an experience, again, a bed is something that you have to try to see if you like, if the baby likes actually, because the baby's the one sleeping there. Most babies are looking for their moms or the smell of their moms, especially when they're breastfed. They don't want to sleep with anyone else or with another smell or in their bed. But I'm hoping this cot, because we can put this side down, it's going to be easier for me to be closer to the baby and he would, he, she would sleep in her bed this time. I'm going to put a picture as well of Sophie's bed. She, she had this wonderful bed. I spent lots of money on it because um, I really wanted that bed. It was amazing. And she had a coconut mattress and all, all the things that I read about that are the best for children when they're newborn. But she just wouldn't sleep in it. And Mati had a different bed. He had a bigger one because I wanted it to be good until he grows out of it and he can move into a proper toddler bed, but he wouldn't sleep in his bed either. And Sophie only started sleeping in her bed when she was two and she got a regular toddler bed and she actually slept really well in there. Uh, the, good, the good fortune that we had with Sophie was that she used to sleep all night. Mati used to wake up every two hours to be breastfed and when he stopped breastfeeding, right, he didn't want it anymore, he still woke up at four and at seven, his latest breastfeeding times, <laughs> and you'd have to go and put him back to sleep. So he would sleep in his bed, in his cot at uh, one year, one year and a half. But he would wake up and you'd have to go put him back to sleep and so on. So this is my experience. It doesn't necessarily have to be yours. I'm just letting you know that no matter how nice the bed might be, it might not be to the liking of the baby because obviously the baby wants to be close to mommy. We also use these wipes, but they were okay with Mati. But I've noticed that Sophie gets red in the area where she wipes herself with these. For example, if she wipes her hands or her face, she's going to get little red spots where she wipes herself. So I'm guessing it's not very okay for children that have allergies, but it's been okay with Mati. So not always the, the brand that you use for nappies will be okay from the point of view of wipes. It's always best to go natural and just use water and soap. So regarding other things that you might find useful when having a newborn, um, we had a baby bouncer with Sophie, which was very nice from Fisher Price, the one with the animals. It was green. It had many colors. You have to take that into account when decorating your child's bedroom or buying things for your newborn. Colors are very important for their development. So it was so, so nice. And it bounces, but it was not a big deal, meaning that Sophie wouldn't sit in it. So the problem was that she would sit there for maximum five minutes. She wouldn't sleep in it or anything. She wouldn't calm down if I put it there. I put her there. The only way she would soothe and sleep was on me. So unfortunately, it didn't work out for us. Um, we bought for Mati a different thing, although we kept the one that we had for Sophie. We bought Mati a piece of technology, I would say. It's a baby rocker, the four moms one. I found it really useful, interesting, and so on, in theory. It's a very interesting piece of equipment to have in your house when you have a newborn. 
it soothes the baby, it plays heartbeats, it plays wave sounds, it plays music from your phone. You can control it from your phone and it will swing by itself. It will rock the baby in different um, positions, in different ways. It can work since uh, the moment they're born till uh, they reach a certain weight. The problem that we had with it was that Mati wouldn't stay there. So you would put him down and you would have to pick him up in like five minutes maximum again because he would cry, he would yell, he didn't like it. We had different positions in which you could put him. Now, Mati had a reflux, so of course we had to take that into account when positioning him. But still no way possible to calm him down and keep him there. I was always hoping when he would fall asleep while breastfeeding that I could put him there so he'd be rocked and I could have a bath. But that didn't happen either. So always take into account when buying things that for others are very, very useful, that it might not apply to your children. Every child is different. And obviously, my children didn't like them. Now, I have reached a limit with the rocker because it was so big, it was taking up so much space, that when my son reached the weight max, the maximum weight that was allowed there, and he was no longer okay to go on it, because he was still not sitting there, he was still not sleeping there, I just decided to sell it. And uh, we still kept the bouncer that I had from Sophie. He wouldn't sit in that one either. So we just quit trying. So, you know, on the other hand, something that for my children was extremely useful was the baby play mat or the baby gym, if you want to call it. I have different ones. I had a w one with uh, fish and so on for Sophie, but I did have a bigger one from Fisher Price for Mati with uh, jungle animals, which made uh, some some sounds and had some lights and was like a disco. It was so cool and so nice. And I found that the play mats were always a good thing. Like it would keep them busy for like 15, 20 minutes. So I could do something if I really had to go do something. And Sophie, even if she was over two years old, she would still sit in the play mat with him and they would laugh together and listen to the animals together and listen to the music. So I found that that play mat was really very, very nice. Now, because uh, we used it quite a lot, um, I thought it would be useful to give it to someone to use it as well. So I gave it away after Mati outgrew it. And what I'm planning to do on baby number three is buy another play mat, but the ones with kick and, uh, you know, play, the ones that have a piano at the end. So when the baby kicks, it's going to make sounds of animals and he can play the piano with the legs. And further on, when the baby grows, he can sit in his, in his bum and still play the piano because the piano can be uh, redirected so it's like a table piano. So it, it seems really nice and I'm planning on buying something like that for baby Zoe. Um, also, things that I didn't use, which I absolutely f thought I would use, um, I'd say I bought a scales. Now, with Sophie, I was worried about um, weighing her a lot because I felt like she wouldn't gain enough and so on and I would weigh her a lot and that would just contribute to my worries I would be so worried like she didn't weigh, she didn't gain anything or you know and then I just stopped worrying I just sold the scales and she grew fine I guess uh, considering in the UK, health visitors weigh your children every once in a while. They do advise you that you don't weigh your child every week. You have to do it like every two weeks at least to give it time and so on. So um, we would get the children weighed monthly 
on the other hand, with Mati, I didn't buy any scales. I didn't weigh him unless the health visitor did. And he gained really, really good. I mean, a lot better than Sophie, where I would admit that my stress contributed as well. You can imagine that breastfeeding a child, stress is a very important factor in everything. So it's very important to keep that in mind. So a scale it might seem a useful idea, might seem a good idea, but it might be worrisome for you. So it's better that you just let the professionals do it. They know better and they will tell you exactly all the details and what you need to do. Now, consider the fact that Mati had issues with um, a tongue tie, which was uh, not helping with the breastfeeding. And we still managed to do it. We still managed to, to do it without weighing and anything to stress ourselves out. And he was jaundiced, so he wouldn't gain weight because of that as well. But he still managed to, you know, gain a lot more than Sophie did at his own age. And another thing that I found really useful in my case was to use an electrical pump that would help me extract milk, which I would give him with a syringe after I breastfed him because a supplement was helping us in the first month until he learned to to breastfeed correctly despite her tongue tie and um we used the electrical pump in that way dad could contribute as well he gave him the milk with the syringe and he gained really well in the point of view of weight and we didn't have to give him a formula I gave him my milk, which was full of fat, which is very important for their development in the first months. Um, if you know about colostrum, you will know that it's the most important milk that the baby can get. So for me, it was very important to extract that. And um, I learned so much through this experience. And I do hope that an electrical pump will be useful for someone else as well when they decide to breastfeed. It's okay either way you choose to do things. So it, I'm not judging anyone for any of their decisions. Um, I decided what was best for me and for my children. It's not uncommon for mothers to decide to just give formula and not breastfeed. So we're not judging here. Something we did not buy was a changing table. To be honest, um, I did try that with Sophie in the beginning and I found it just as a bit of furniture that was taking up space in the house and I didn't like it at all. I didn't use it as much because, to be honest, it's more comfortable to change the baby just where you are, on the bed, on their cot or wherever they are. And um, at a certain point, they will be too big for the changing table anyways. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi.